are some of your price points there in Outlook in the next uh, in the rest of the quarter here? Well, again, that that we came up with a number that was actually it's twenty three ninety five. Okay, all it is is when you go back and look at the os- a certain oscillator high reading on momentum now, not price that we made in that very dramatic surge in April, May, June, July of two thousand twenty. Gold got X percent above certain a certain long-term moving average that we're monitoring. Okay, forget the average, it's the distance above it. How high did we get in that explosive surge? Well, if we simply replicated that and went back to that high and, and had problems there, in other words, where momentum said, okay, I'm back to an old high, I think I'll pause. Well, if you do the math and you, and you go out you know, a couple months and assume it might happen then, you come up with 23.95. Okay, uh, which is well, well above all the price highs we've seen since 2020. By the way, that intraday price highs have been 2070, 2070, and recently 2080. Okay, uh, we've already made new high monthly closes for gold, new high weekly closes, and new high daily closes. We just haven't exploded well beyond that level yet. I think that's probably coming. And I think in order to help determine that, one thing investors should look at is out the side mirrors, not the front window windshield. Yeah, you can look at gold and silver all you want and me- measure them and day by day and get fretful or get happy or whatever you want. But look at some of these big asset categories that will definitely influence the underlying reality and hence the Fed. Gold, I think, knows what the central bank is ultimately going to end up doing. And that's going back to print, print, print. Why? Because it's going to have to. It's going to have a disaster like it's never seen. And by the way, I, we said this a year and a half ago when we called the top in the S&P and the NASDAQ. It was February of 2022 for S&P, January 2022 for NASDAQ 100. We argued the first leg would be an arm wrestling match. It was. You know, a lot of zigzags. We're still in that first leg. The second leg we think will be more serious. And that's when disappointment among the still excited investors out there who think, oh boy, we just do a, we've got a bottom here. You know, this is, this is but we've got to buy this, you know, because because Apple went up good, you know, or Microsoft went up good. Of course, they're weighted so heavily that, you know, they could go up good and 90% of the market go down and the market would still go up because on the index, they're you know, weighted at double digits. But anyway, so we're focused on certain aspects of the stock market that once we see them start to roll over again, we think the market will go. We're watching Apple and Microsoft because they're two of the stellar, extremely heavily weighted symbols uh, in, in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ 100. So as they go, so will the market. And so will sentiment because they've been the hope filled symbols. You know, uh, the other sector that we nailed was back in late January with the banks. We put out a couple reports and warned that even though banks had been behaving much better than the S&P 500 ever since mid-2022, banks made their low in June 2022, just like S&P, and had a rally. But S&P and NASDAQ went down and took out that low in October. Banks did not. So banks held better on the downside. And then when we turned up for the rally late into the year and into January this year, I think it actually extended into February. That rally was stronger than the S&Ps as well. So if you were a, quote, portfolio manager looking for the best places to be, you would have favored banks. And that was true up to that point. But our work on momentum said that, no, watch out, something's going to happen here. We're going to get ambushed in this good sector. And if it goes, watch out, because it's too critical. Uh, And sure enough, it went. And, you know, it it got triggered all of our numbers in early March and by late March, it had gone through the June lows of last year, meaning taking out the lows of the last actually almost two years worth of lows came out. But the prominent June lows of the banking sector came out. And this wasn't true just with the regional banks. It was true with the large banks like KRKBE, which is an ETF for the entire bank sector. KRE is an ETF for the regionals. They both took out the June 2022 lows. So it wasn't just one or two isolated banks. Our focus now is on the six too big to fail banks. And we put out a report the other day on them because, you know, if they ever start to have trouble, don't worry, they're not going out of business because, you know, they got a blank check. Okay. The issue is, though, if they start to behave 
in a way that smacks the average investor in the face and the Fed in the face. That is a factor that would definitely apply breaks for the Fed. It already has, really, because their balance sheet has started to explode again. <clears throat> so we've noticed that among the six big banks, Bank of America and Wells Fargo have taken out the June 2022 lows, just like the overall banking sector and just like uh, the regional banks. So of the six, two of them have actually taken out the 2022 lows. So that'd be like the S&P right now trading over 3,300, let's say, instead of you know 4,000 area, uh, if, they, if the market were matching them. But we're watching the other four. It's Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, and uh, Citibank. Now, Citicorp is pretty close to its 2022 lows. It's got... In fact, you can go back to 2020 and find lows in the Citicorp. You can draw a line sideways, so punch it up on your screen, Citicorp C, okay? And you'll see what I'm talking about, how it's, it's sort of laying on the mat. It hasn't made the new lows yet, but we figure if we get another one or two of these big banks to actually take out the 2022 lows, it's going to start to get noticed. And instead of all the focus being on one, regional banks, or two, a mismanaged bank, good excuse for the Fed, you know, uh, and then suddenly the public's going to say, uh-oh, this is getting out of hand. So that's why we're watching the banks. And so we have to, we have to watch six symbols <laughs> uh, for the biggies. And uh, frankly, they're starting to look vulnerable in terms of starting another rollover that might take out the June low. And so we're monitoring that you know, closely, and we update our subscribers on that. Because we think when that happens, I don't care what else is happening out there, forget it. This will be the dominant factor. And I think gold will respond accordingly. Now, what does that mean, I guess, for the financial system? If we see these too big to fail banks having issues, obviously they're not going to fail. Uh, the government's going to backstop them. But what does it mean for the broader financial system here? We're watching the ETF called XLF, which is the broad financial sector as well. It did not take out the June 2022 lows or the October 2022 lows. So unlike the banks that financial sector broadly defined. Now, it includes banks, but it includes things like American Express, uh, uh, insurance companies, uh, quite a few financial related companies that aren't in the banking business. Okay, so it's, it's a nice mixed weighting. And it has distinctly not taken out the June lows like the banking sector has. Um, and we're watching it now. It's very close. XLF, for example, in the recent drop, dropped to 30.39. It had been up to the upper 30s, by the way. Its lows back in 2022 in June and October were also either side of 30. There was one dip slightly below 30 and a bunch of other lows just above 30. Well, we stopped just above 30 again. So somebody looking at a price chart said, hey, I think I'll buy it there again. Okay, well, you got to bounce up over 33. Right now you're back trading either side of 32. We, you drop another point or two in XLF, and we argue that there's enough technicals that we see on momentum that argue you're finally going to take out that, that obvious price chart low, meaning blow out 30 bucks on XLF. And when you start breaking the entire financial sector, remember, it's in distinct contrast to, for example, let's say the semiconductors, okay, which everybody's cheering. Well, heck, they had a 50% collapse last year, semiconductors. So they deserve to have a nice big rally, right? Okay. It's a meaningless bit of big rally, but everybody's looking at it and they're not looking at the banks and the financials, which are basically laying on the mat. If the S again, if the S&P were doing what the financial sector is doing right now, we'd be trading right now about 3,600, but a hundred points off it's June low. So we're watching the financial sector. It's a good point to bring up. Yeah. The broad financial sector, because if the contagion moves into that sector, uh, you know, all bets are off.